Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, fabulous first grade. I'm Mrs. Hammock, and welcome to our PBS classroom. Hey, do you have your free activity book yet? You're going to want to get one of these. Do you want to know how to do it? Do you remember? All you have to do is write to me right here at our PBS classroom with the address on the screen. Send me a letter, send me a picture, tell me something that you've been learning. I would love to hear from you. And if you do, we're gonna send you one of these cool activity books. Did you know they have stickers? Do you love stickers? I love stickers. There's word searches and all kinds of cool things to do just for some fun. So if you would like one of these free books, please write to me here in our classroom so that we can send you one. Hey, you know, I've been reading um, books just to relax and enjoy myself. I hope you have been too. One of my favorite authors is Robert Munch. And this story is called Stephanie's Ponytail. This is a story about a little girl who does not want to be like everyone else. But everyone else wants to be like her. You should read this and find out what happens because it is really funny. At the end of the story, something unbelievable happens and you, you'll want to know about it. Check for this book at your Fresno County Public Library or check Sora and see if it's available there. All right, speaking of Sora, are you ready to find out about this week's top checkouts, the schools that have had the most checkouts on Sora for the past week? All right, so in number five, the number five spot is Baird Middle School. Way to go, explorers. Great job. Boy, it is sometimes difficult to get middle schoolers to do reading for enjoyment. So way to go. We're very proud of you. All right, tomorrow we'll find out who's in the number four position. Today and all this week, we are gonna be working on becoming better writers. Now, all the weeks before, we've been practicing all the things to help us with our reading and writing, but we've really focused a lot on reading skills. But now we need to apply those to writing. And so we're gonna learn a few things. We're gonna learn some grammar, and we're gonna learn some mechanics, which is how our language works, and we're gonna do some writing together. I think we're gonna have a really good time and I think you'll learn a lot. So when you come to our classroom, it would be awesome if you brought something to write with. That way you can write at home too. All right, we're gonna start with grammar. And this is not new to you, but I wanna go over it again in case we have new friends in our classroom that missed it the first time. All this week, we're gonna be talking about nouns, all kinds of different nouns. Do you remember what a noun is? I made this little chart to help us. It says a noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. I added animal there because my first graders always tell me, Mrs. Hammock, an animal is not a thing, it's alive. So I, I kind of agree with that. So we'll say things or animals, okay? And we're going to talk about how a person could be a doctor, a teacher, a mom, a baby, a firefighter. A place could be school. A place could be the forest or at a store or a home or a bedroom. And things or animals could be horses, apples, dog, pencil, shirt, pumpkins. All of those are things. I have a little song to help you remember about what a noun is. 
Sometimes music helps things lock into our brain, and so I always like to try to figure out a little song for you. So here is our noun song. Are you ready? Okay. It goes like this. A noun is a person, place, or thing. A person, place, or thing. A person, place, or thing. A noun is a person, place, or thing. And it's also animals. So if somebody asks you what a noun is, now you can sing that song and help them. So to kind of continue thinking about nouns, we're going to do a little picture sort. I have some pictures here that I'm going to show you. And I want you to tell me if they are a person, a place, a thing, or an animal. OK? All right, here we go. What do you see in this picture? Yeah, it's a helicopter, isn't it? Good. So is a helicopter a person, place, or thing? Very nice. It is a thing. Oop, let's put it down here so we can still see. How about this guy? What is this? Right, a bear. Isn't he beautiful? OK, so is a bear a person? Oh, well, you're right. Sometimes in stories, the characters are animals. But in real life, when we're writing about a bear, it is an animal, not a person, even though sometimes in stories they act like people. How about this? A doctor. Great. Oh, that's definitely a person. How about this? Yeah, a city. Good. All right. That would be a place, wouldn't it? How about a home? Right. That would be a place, too. And the last one I have for you, a boy. And that is definitely a person. So a noun is a person, a place, a thing, or an animal. We're going to need to know that when we do some writing, and so that's why we started with that. Now, to absolutely make sure that you have that locked into your brain, we're going to take a look at some practice, some guided practice. It says a noun names a person, place, or thing. Say the name of the noun in these pictures. Person, place, thing. Here's a girl, a school, and a bus. And now we're going to circle the noun in each sentence. The van is big. Which one of those words is the noun? Right, the van. They gave you a little picture clue here, didn't they? Great job. How about the next one? A man helps us cross. Which one is the person, place, or thing? Right, the man. We are at school. Which one is the person, place, or thing? You're right. We is also a person, place, or thing. And that is a noun. It's a special kind of noun that we'll talk about another time. But school is the one we're looking for. Miss Kim has a book. Ooh. You saw two? You're right. Miss Kim is a person. And a book is a thing. A pet swims. Right, a pet is our noun. Great job. All right, now, sometimes when authors are writing and they use a list of nouns, then we have to write it in a special way. So I'm going to show you this. It's called commas in a series. So I have two sentences here. I play with dolls, blocks, and wigs. Do you see the noun dolls, blocks, and wigs? Those are all things, aren't they? Well, when we want to write a sentence that has a list, we have to separate the nouns by commas. And a comma, remember, a comma is not like an apostrophe. It looks the same, except it's at the bottom. And then we need another one after the second noun. I play with dolls blocks, and wigs. Good job. All right, we don't have time to finish the second one because I want to get on to our writing for today. Today, we are going to read this model, and then we're going to do a little writing together. Are you ready to try it? Good. It says, teachers work hard. They plan lessons. 
they have families. When we're writing, we want all of our details to talk about the same thing and give more information. We organize our paper that way. So what is this draft talking about? Right, teachers work hard. And what are the details? They plan lessons. They have families. Does having a family tell really about a teacher working hard? No, it, it kind of doesn't relate to what we started talking about. So we're going to change that. And we're going to write together this part of the story. I wrote it ahead of time since we were on TV, and we want to make sure we have time to finish. So I'm going to keep those two details. Teachers work hard. They plan lessons. So now I need another detail that really talks about teachers and things that they do when they're working hard. So let's think, what might we say to help talk about teachers working hard? What do they do? What are some things they do? Right, they, they do yard duty when we're at school in person. What else? We do a lot of this when we're online now. Right, they have meetings, right? Not only with you, but with moms and dads and with other teachers. So let's write the sentence, they go to meetings. That's four words. We're gonna start with the word they. Are you ready? Oh look, we already have the word they, and we know it because it's one of our high frequency words. Do you remember what we need to do? Yes, we're gonna start with an uppercase letter. T H E Y, they. Now the next word is also a sight word, go. Before we write it though, we need a finger space. I'm gonna write G O. They go. Now we need another finger space to write the word to. They go to meetings. Okay, this is a tricky one. I'm gonna help you a lot with it, but let's say what sounds you know, okay? Here we go. m e t ing -s. Okay, what, what's the first sound? Yes, M. m e that is a tricky one. It's gonna be two E's in a row. m e t t t t good job. Now, they go to meet. How do I add ing? Remember that inflectional ending we learned? They go to meet ing. Now this says meeting, that means one. What do we do when it's more than one? Right, we add an S. And because we're finished, we have to put a period. Great job. Hey, you did that like a champ. See how smart you are? Reading and writing go together. That's why we've been working so hard on sounds and letters. Will you come back with me tomorrow and learn some more about nouns and mechanics and writing? I hope so. Goodbye now, goodbye now, the clock says we're done. I'll see you tomorrow, goodbye everyone. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.